Hello guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel again. Today we are going to talk about a very interesting topic which is mobile genetic element. So actually, first of all, what are these mobile genetic elements? These are the special types of DNA that can move or that can show movement within the genome or uh, in a cell. So it was first discovered by Barbara McLenton in May in 1955. She was an American scientist who was working on a maze. So uh, she said that maze is a very spectacular subject uh, to study the transposable elements. She was actually challenged the idea that the genome were a static, uh, were a static entity. But uh, she said that this uh, genome is not static, rather it's an evolved things. So she said that the transposable elements are the major drivers of genome evolution. So this mobile genetic element is also called a transposable elements or jumping genes or mobile cassettes. So it is a DNA sequences. So that can change its relative position within the genome of a single cell. So uh, these mobile genetic elements or transposable elements select transpose from one position to another position in a genome of a cell. So uh, the mechanism of you know transposition mechanism of movement from one place to another place within the genome can either be a copy and paste mechanism or a cut and paste mechanism. So the transposition can uh, you know create a phenotypically significant mutation and alter the cell genome size. So how these transposable elements can create phenotypically significant mutation and alter the cell genome size. So for example, if uh, there is a protein which has, if there is a uh, open reading frame which has initiating sequence and stop codon or initiating to stop codon. If there is a formation of one protein, protein 1 like A, T, G, C, C, T, G, this is the sequence of DNA but due to the transposition or movement of a transposable element can insert into this. If these three U, A, G was a stop codon but between them there is a transposable element and it become A, G, T, A, G, C, R, C, A, U. So it can give a different protein so it phenotypically reflect a different trait or different uh, you know future. So this is the process the uh, this is the process that uh, the transposable element can make a significant mutation and uh, how it alter the size of genome. If there is a transposable element, it can make it is copy. So the number of G, number of DNA sequences in that or number of nucleotide in that genome can increase or either it could be decreased. So on the basis of the movement uh, or on the basis of the mechanism of transposition, the transposable elements are divided into two classes. So the class one is so the class one transposon and class two transposon. So the class one transposon is actually the copy and paste mechanism. These are retro transposon. We also call the class 1 transposon as a retro transposon because it can first make a copy of RNA then it converted it into a DNA sequences. And the second is uh, class second transposon. This consists of DNA that moves directly from place to place. Uh, so retro transposons are class 1 transposons in a genome evolution. So retrotransposons also move by a copy and paste mechanism but in contrast to the copy is made RNA not DNA. So uh, the RNA copies are then transcribed back into DNA using a reverse transcriptor. So how this happens? I am going to show you this for example this is a long sequence of DNA. In between them there is a transposon which this is a DNA sequences. So by using it make generally DNA during transcription it converted into RNA or mRNA. So this is the DNA. So if there is a uh, retro transposons or uh, 
type 1 transposons it can make a DNA out of it again this is called reverse transcript transcription so the enzyme which is used first is it will make some enzyme which is called reverse transcriptase RT so uh, with the help of this enzyme the RNA again converted into the DNA sequences and then it will insert it into the insertional sequences so this is the mechanism through the retro transposon copy and paste their DNA and again insert it into the another position so the number of gene also increase it so the genome has been evolved so the second the major retro transposons have long terminal repeats at <coughs> the end of their uh, you know sequence of their dna so at the end there are ltrs long terminal repeat in it so uh, retro transposition activities actually increase the genome size or uh, it actually contribute you know to uh, in uh, to fluctuate or alter the genome size so some example of the retro transpositions are copia elements in drosophila melanogasters and ty elements in yeast these are some example of retro transpositions or retro transposons so this is uh, the mechanism which i was talking about Uh, so how transposable elements contribute to genome evolution so before that I am I will show you some slides I will show you one slide which will talk about the mechanism how these retro transposons uh, convert or how this retro transposition happens so this is the mechanism where the, this is the genome size this is the genome of a uh, cells are this is the DNA see and this is the retro transposons for example if the presence of transposon present that is step 1 transposon present there so first of all it will transcript into an RNA or mRNA so this is called it transcription so through the process of translation it will make some protein so this protein is an enzyme actually in enzyme so this enzyme is called river transcriptase so using this enzyme this uh, the RNA will convert it into again into a DNA so using the DNA replication it will make another copies or synthesis of DNA strings so this make again at the end it will make a DNA into a DNA uh, so uh, it will insert it into the another position insertion of retro transposon so this is the process how these retro transposons move or how this retro transposition happens so how retro transposable elements contribute to genome evolution so how this contribute to genome evolution so as I said that the, the transposons are the major drivers of uh, you know genome evolution this how this happens so multiple copies of similar transposable elements may facilitate recombination or crossing over between different chromosomes so how this the, the transposable elements make their number of copies through the process of copy and paste retro transposon so so insertion of transposable element within a protein coding sequence may block protein production how this happened I, I have already said that if there is a sequence a t g c so if there is AUG which is initiating codon and UAG this is a stop codon but if there uh, is a transposable element uh, it can insert it in between this open reading frame and it stop the protein synthesis so it will again block the protein production so insertion of transposable element within a regulatory sequence may increase or decrease protein sequences so during protein synthesis on the sequence of the DNA there are some regulatory proteins which is called it promoter enhancer and all that so if it uh, this transposable element inserted somewhere here it uh, uh, in between the regulatory sequence it can regulate the protein production or it can decrease the protein production if it uh, you know inserted into the promoter it will stop working so the protein production will decrease and if uh, uh, it happens uh, in the enhancer the again it will decrease the protein production <clears throat> so transposable elements may carry a gene or group of gene to a new location so I said that so um, 
it can also create a new sites for alternate use splicing in an RNA transcript. In other cases, change are usually detrimental but can occur from advantages to an organism. So sometimes it is very dangerous because it can create a mutation or it can stop a protein production or it can increase the protein production and lead to led to mutation and other diseases so sometimes it could be advantageous uh, so the example of transposons are acds element in maize we just first discovered by this uh, the american scientist barbara michael in 1950 so role and effect of transposition on genome so how this affect and what is the role of this transposable element in the genome so actually the transposable element tends to increase the number of copies when it introduces it into a genome so uh, they are actually mutagens for example if they increase the protein production or it can lead to cancerous cells so because it can make a lot of proteins uh, you know if it inserted into a enhancer or uh, you know regulatory sequences so it could be a mutagen it can cause mutation so the transposable uh, elements transposons are retro transposon which inserted into a functional gene will not uh, you know will most likely to disable their genes so for example this is a structural genes so a b c d so uh, these gene give a certain protein and certain characters so if that inserted in between these two sequences so it will block or it can you know stop the function of that coding genes so if it happens to be in the promoter or enhancer region it will again increase or decrease the uh, you know production of protein or activity of their gene so one exam few examples of these retro transpositions are hemophilia a and b severe combined immunodeficiency skit and uh, duchenne muscular syndrome uh, you know dystrophy these are certain examples of uh, the transfer retro transposon so transposon are this is an art make it uh, you know you see the mobile genetic element cause it this prized color pattern in morning glory see the club and the floor one first floor and second floor it is the same species but due to transposable element their physical future phenotypic characters have been changed so coming uh, to another topic c value paradox and why the eukaryotic genome size varies so actually what is this c value the c value is the total amount of dna within a genome so the uh, overall uh, you know dna within a genome so uh, in uh, you know the higher organism uh, the uh, c value paradox it c value paradox happen in higher organism so what is this c value paradox so there is a you know lack of relationship between the amount of dna uh, of an organism to it is uh, coding potential the uh, you know uh, and it is coding potential or it is complexity so the range in c value paradox does not correlate uh, you know uh, correlate within the complexity of that organism so in uh, what happens in lower eukaryotes like mycoplasma bacteria worms and all this when the number when the amount of dna increases when the complexity increases the amount of dna also increases so but in uh, you know in haploid cell the morphological complexity when increase the amount of dna also increases but in eukaryotes it is the way other way around it do not you know correlate like when the comp uh, amount of dna increase the complexity do not increases in eukaryotes so this is called it uh, the c value paradox so another topic is uh, adaptive evolution what is adaptive evolution so adaptive uh, the word itself says that adaptive means adaptation the evolution based on the adaptation of an organism so uh, you know adaptive evolution is evolution based on creature need within an environment so example like the you know developing of camouflage technique based on forest you know region about beaks carving slightly to allow it to reach into the holes on the side of a tree so mm, this is the example of you know uh, beak uh, uh, but the same species when it uh, you know uh, diverged due to a certain uh, you know evolutionary process into another environment like snowy or some other in the another environment in forest the shape of their beak can differ 
due to that evolution or eruptive evolution. So the association of increased rate of gene gain and positive selection is an indicator of adaptive evolution. So due to adaptive evolution, uh, the genome says or the rate of gene or a positive selection will increases. So another example is uh, the uh, single nucleotide polymorphism like SNPs, uh, for example, which affect the beta globin gene and result in a curve without skull cell, uh, skull shaped, you know, that uh, uh, RBC. So curved and elongated RBC and removed from the circulation actually. So in homozygous gene of that mutation uh, generally are usually die from anemia without intensive care. So if there is homozygous, all the, you know, uh, the RBCs are skull shape, but in heterozygous, the individual will have mild anemia, but will deal better with the malarial parasite plasmodium falciparum. How, how this, uh, you know, uh, 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 heterozygous individual, you know, survive or better with the uh, malaria parasite uh, plasmodium falciparum mm, because when they infected the cell, uh, you know, the heterozygous cell because in heterozygous there are both mm, the circular and elongate or curved or elongated skull shape abysses both are present in that but the, uh, the uh, uh, plasmodium falciparum parasite, uh, you know, mature in the RBC when it entered to the sickle cell, they are actually removed from the circulation so the uh, plasmodium falciparum also removed from that organism so this is the general structure of uh, you know rbc it is normal when it the cell is circular or spherical shape so uh, with time if there is an you know change or as in snps or small nucleotide protein all there is a mutation it slowly changes it from normal to spherical shape then oval shape then at ultimately the sickle shape and 